Hey guys, Gary J here again. In my first video, we talked about the uh, Ruger 22 caliber single six, and um, we talked about that at kind of at length a little bit. And this is the 22 long rifle, and we have kind of the sister of this one, which is the Ruger 357 Magnum. Now this would be the 357 Magnum, and uh, which is a lot bigger than the Ruger. Okay, and we have the same handle grips and so forth, on the grips on it. And looking at the barrel here, you can see you don't want to get shot by either one of them, but. Uh, this is the 357. This is a pretty good size pistol right here. Now, the difference in uh, these two calibers is that this is the 22 and this is the 357. And with the 357, you can also shoot a 38, and this would be your 38. If you look at this, the length of the brass right here, the brass is about an eighth of an inch shorter than this brass. So the 357 is a lot more powerful than the 38 special. And then we have our 22 right here. So looking at the um, 357 which is really a pretty huge pistol right here is really a nice pistol and it's just like the uh, the 22 it's got really nice high sight on the front here it's got a really nice adjustable sight here on the rear and uh, you can adjust it up and down right and left uh, it works just like the other one did um, On these right here, pull all the way back. The trigger pull is really, really sweet on this right here. I mean, it's really crisp, really easy to pull the trigger. You won't pull yourself off on on shooting this one right here. And uh, but on reloading this one, uh, the 357, same way. Open up the gate right here. You've got your uh, cylinder here. Where you place your cartridge in here we've already checked it with the gun is empty and if you're not sure if a pistol is empty like a, a one of these uh single sixes just rotate the cylinder around and around and you can see all the cylinders so you know that it's empty so when you're going to load it you're going to put your cartridge in here turn the cylinder with your hand put the next cartridge in turn the cylinder again put your next cartridge in the next cartridge it holds six rounds like the single six twenty two does. Close your gate and uh, turn your cylinder with your hand. Make sure it locks, and then hold your finger on the on the uh, trigger guard right here, and aim at your target. And once you're there, pull your your hammer all the way back, and then place your finger on the trigger, and carefully squeeze. Now, a lot of times we don't like to, to dry fire uh, pistols. That is just to, to take them in and let them let the hammer fall uh, against the firing pin. Uh, sometimes it can damage a firing pin on some models. So anyway, um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, once you shoot your six rounds, you're going to open your gate right here and... Uh, on this model here, you can turn the cylinder freely, and you got your plunger right here. And so you push your plunger right here. You see the rod come out the end uh, right here. That pushes out your casing. Turn it with your hand again, and again, and again. You get all your rounds out, and then put your cartridges back in. Okay, so that's pretty simple on reloading the uh 357 Ruger. 
Now this model is, is a little different than that one because this one is a, a newer version and uh, it has a protective plate in here that protects the firing pin in case uh, you were to drop it against the, uh, the spur here so it wouldn't go off. And if you have one that doesn't have the safety mechanism in here, you can send it to Ruger and they'll fix that for you free. So that's a real nice feature there. But on this one, again, you can turn the cylinder and pull your plunging rod in without having to cock this one back to the half cock position. And you can also load it the same way with the hammer forward in this position here. And then if you want to take the cylinder out of this one, make sure that it's, of course, empty. Pull your hammer back right here and press this button right here and this plunger rod right here. You pull that forward and you can leave that rod in there where it's at right there. Turn it over. Open your gate. Pull your cylinder out. Put it back in. Close that. Now you may have to turn this cylinder in order to pull this rod to get it the center of the uh, cylinder itself. Now you're gonna press this rod, press this button right here to get it to lock in, and then you check it, make sure that it's it's rotating like it's supposed to, and that it's tight when you when you turn it the cylinder. Okay, and that's all you're doing to that. Uh, maybe you can read Ruger on the barrel there. They always have it stamped. And this is an older 357 Magnum here. And this is kind of an older one, but it's in a lot better shape to me, uh, this one here. And you can buy Pac-Man grips for it. And uh, that works really well. And this one's just like the other one. You don't have to pull the hammer back to uh, put cartridges in it. Leave the hammer down. And you can eject the cartridges the same way. That, like that. Make sure when you get ready to shoot that your finger is straight out. Pull the hammer back as you're aiming. And then put your finger on the trigger and pull the trigger. Now this right here, you may be able to see this is a, a plate right here. This, this is a sliding plate. When the hammer goes forward, that plate goes up and protects the firing pin so that if you drop it on the spur of the hammer, it's not going to go off. And so if you have one that doesn't have that plate, then you can send it to Ruger and they'll fix it free for you. It's a safety mechanism. And uh, this is really a sweet 357. Now, we can go deer hunting with this 357. Look at the barrel on that thing. It's a monster. And this is the, uh, maybe you can read that, the 357 Magnum caliber new model Blackhawk. And this is the... 357 Magnum New Model Blackhawk 2. It's amazing. Some people take care of their guns a lot. Some people don't. I mean, if you're going to use it for hunting and you can be rough with it, that's fine. But I um, uh, always like to try to keep up mine uh, from getting skinned up and so forth. So you see the big difference between these uh, 357s and the Ruger 22. So they're great pistols, and they will last you the rest of your life. Uh, one thing I want to show you uh, real quick, too, is that I showed you uh, on my Thompson Contender pistols, one that shoots, um, I think I had uh, 
well, well, you can change the barrels out, but I had a set of three barrels, and one of them was a 357 Maxima. It's like the 357, but it's called the Maxima or 357 Super Mag, and I'll show you the difference. Whereas this right here is a 357 Magnum that Thompson Tender I have will shoot the 357 Maxima, and this is the difference right here in uh, those two bullets. These are both 357s. Now the 357 will shoot the 38 Special, which is this one. So you can get two different calibers in the 357. The 357 Magnum will shoot the 38 Special too. They're interchangeable. Now they will hit at different points because one's got more power than the other. Now you can't use a 357 Maxima and a 357 Magnum, but that Thompson Contender barrel I had, I have, will shoot this big 357 Maxima, and you could shoot the 357 Magnum in that same barrel and the 38 Special, but most of the time, if a if a barrel is made or designed for a particular car, uh, caliber, that's the one you want to shoot in. It. Instead of, you know, the versatility of it, shooting all three different ones. But just letting you know that you can do that. So the 357 Magnum, you can shoot 38 Special and 357 Magnum, of course, in these pistols. So you get kind of two pistols out of one. And uh, these are just great pistols right here. And uh, Again, they'll last you a lifetime. You can go deer hunting with them, probably in most states, because they're so powerful. At one time, the 357 Magnum was the most powerful handgun in the world at one time. And I think it, it was replaced by the 44 Magnum. You might remember Clint Eastwood saying he had the most powerful handgun in the world, which was 44 Magnum. And then, of course, they always come up with something a little bit bigger. Uh, they like the 454 Casol and the 500 Smith & Wesson, which is kind of the top now being the most powerful handgun in the world so anyway that's kind of how it works so these are great pistols to have right here um, for protection for uh, defense and hunting and fishing you can put um, they make cartridges too with the 357 uh, that have like what we call a rat shot it's got little beads in it to shoot snakes and stuff like that it's splatters out like a like a shotgun blast you, know, you can get those for these two and you can get them for the 22 as well shoot snakes and things like that it just spreads out like a shotgun blast so uh if you're looking for a good gun that will not hang up on you like an automatic will sometimes uh this would be a, a really nice pistol to have these probably run hmm, today five six hundred dollars you may find one at a pawn shop for like 300 uh if you're lucky so always buy second hand you can check them out and make sure that they're good quality uh if you buy one in a pawn shop that's usually the cheapest way to do it pawn shops are pretty high now because of gun broker and other uh guns america because they can sell them online and get a premium price for a lot of these pistols now but I hope that helps you uh, in choosing maybe a single six type pistol. Great pistols by Ruger. Again, they last you. They'll last you the rest of your life. Oh, I forgot to show you a pistol grip that I made from one of these 357 Rugers. And uh, this would be more of a target grip, I would say. And uh, I made this one out of a piece of wood. It can be a little time consuming to uh, make uh, a pistol grip, especially doing the inletting for the frame and all. Well, it's not real, real fancy. I got a friend of mine that he can really make pistol grips. But with this one right here, see, it's, it's ergonomical, fits like a target grip uh, when you're shooting. And. Uh, it's a pretty good size uh, grip here. So it really conforms to your hand. And if you're shooting like any type of real distance and, you know, really shooting for accuracy or hand loading. I hand load a lot of my 
cartridges in 357 and 38 and many others. So just wanted to show you that that you can you can buy some different types of pistol grips, but uh, and you can kind of make your own and use a Dremel tool to uh, shape this up. But I thought I'd show you that what you can do also with the Ruger 357. Thanks for watching again, guys. Gary J.